This is the video series of the Wi-Fi Pineapple modules. This time we're going to be doing an overview of the Evil Portal, otherwise known as the Captive Portal. So the first thing that you want to ensure is that you definitely have internet access through your Pineapple. This can be verified by going to the dashboard and clicking the bulletins link. After that, you want to go under Modules and then click Evil Portal. Now, the configuration here is you need to set up a new portal name. So you can do that in this box right here, Create New Portal. I'm going to go ahead and use this Dark Portal 2 that I've created. What you're going to have to do is actually modify some code here or deploy your own code for your particular portal. Now I'm going to go ahead and just use what comes out of the box as a sample and kind of show you how you need to modify that to make it work. So when you come into the portal, you'll notice that there's a myportal.php file, index.php, and a jQuery file. The first thing we want to do is modify the index.php file to now include a username and password field. So that's just going to be straight HTML. You're going to add a username and password. Make sure that the username and password is lowercase. Make sure that the name values for username and password are lowercase, username, password. The reason why this is important is for the match of the code that will go behind it. Once you have that done, save your changes. Then you're going to go to myportal.php, go ahead and edit. You'll see a handle authorization function. Remember, this is just sample code. Underneath the call of parent handle authorization, you're going to add these two lines of code. You're going to append to an existing file, which you'll have to create on the system first, but you're going to append the information that's captured through the captive portal. Once you've added these two lines, go ahead and save your code. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my portal and I'm going to start the captive portal. Now what you want to do is log into your pineapple at command line. One of the things that you'll notice is if you go to the directory portals right under tilde, you'll see the name of your portal there. In my case, it's dark portal two. If you were interested in knowing where exactly the PHP files are served, you just go under www on the pineapple from this location, you can see that these files are the ones that we modified. What you'll also realize is they're symbolically linked from that other location. So if I go back, you'll actually see the PHP files that you modified. Now from here, you want to do a touch command to temp portal.log to match the portal name that you put in the code. You're going to tail that file. To test your code out first, what you'll want to do is type something in these two boxes of username and password. We'll just do Sunny and my test. Make sure that you're tailing that log. Go ahead and click authorize. And you should see those values appear in your log. Also, there's a message that I've been authorized successfully. Now, one thing you should keep in mind is as you start testing this out, there's going to be a listing of authorized clients that will be added here. So if you do this and then all of a sudden you're not able to see the captive portal anymore, it could be because that particular IP address is now authorized. So you may want to go ahead and remove it or revoke uh, that authorization. So at this point, what I want to do is actually test it out on a hooked client. If I go to the client tab, I can see that I have an iPad that is hooked to the pineapple. So if I go on that iPad and I continue to tail my log here, if I surf anywhere on the iPad, my victim should see the evil portal prompt and should have to log into the evil portal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and we should be capturing the credentials in the tailed log. 
And so using the username of Sunny and now the password of Sunny, I'm actually authorized through the evil portal. And I know that because on the iPad, I actually receive the same message. And if you look under the authorized clients, you will now see the IP address of the iPad. So if I go back here, I can verify that. So one thing to keep in mind, however, is that the evil portal really only works over HTTP. So websites that are HTTPS, you're going to have to do some additional SSL stripping and some other magic in order to get that done. But for HTTP, this will work great. So that's the main idea behind the evil portal.